Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go to the papers this morning and quickly share with you the major stories that we can find. I'm going to be starting with the Punch newspapers, uh, which should be on your screen in just a few seconds. And uh, of course, we will be introducing our uh, analysts this morning. There you have it. It says, uh, Delta variant experts won as federal government begins uh, camping for 49,950 core members. Only COVID-19 negative graduates will be admitted into camps, says the NYSC. NMA seeks adherence to protocols, says COVID-19 now an albatross. Um, it's scary. Coronavirus protocols mustn't be violated. Um, Council of Vir uh, Virologists. All right, also on the punch this morning. Bandits reduce ransom for Baptist school students, demand 60 million naira. Stop manhunt for Igboho, release loyalist, OPC tells Buhari. And also UK should pressure Nigeria on Kano's access to consular intervention, a lawyer is saying. People in power riding on electoral reform, frustrating further review. And that is from uh, Ike Kweramadu. And um, under Yoruba, National, uh, Yoruba Nation rally, autopsy faults police claim, says sales girl was shot. We can also see on the pond this, pond this morning, Amcon recovers 1.4 trillion naira, says 350 chronic debtors, or uh, 2 trillion naira. Buhari directs creation of farm estates in 109 senatorial districts. The president, governors, and others seek prayers as Muslims mark Salah. And a rescued Nigerian Air Force pilot returns to rousing welcome after bandits' attack on jet. There was a news report yesterday of another uh, Nigerian Air Force jet that was shot down um, and of course videos emerged later of the pilot who was able to successfully eject himself from the plane and um, find uh, himself uh, uh, safety. Um, we can also see um, Oshun leads as INEC records 752,011 registration applications and oil plunges to $68, Nigeria's six increased production quota. Those are the big ones on the Punch newspapers this morning. And uh, on the Guardian newspaper, Idel Kabi, Buhari decries rising cost of rams, food items, says government addressing hardship deplores acts not consisted, consistent with Islam. Governors Tinubu, Atiku, Saraki, others charge Nigerians on unity and tolerance. PDP seeks prayers to save Nigeria from insecurity, biting economic hardship. Aviation stakeholders urge military to rejig strategy as bandits shoot down attack jets in Zamfara. Pilot survives, evades bandits' hideout under cover of darkness, says military. Time for military intelligence to reassess enemy power, says Ojikutu. Herders kill two aid workers, six in Benue, also on the Guardian newspaper. He will fault NAVDAC, says COVID-19 herbal cure had undergone clinical trial. Um, TUC tells Buhari, come up with workable economic plan to lift Nigerians. Why entire country should be on red alert for COVID-19 third wave? And lastly, on the Guardian newspaper, SEC, Undo reached truce to protect shareholders. And on the Daily Sun uh, this morning, Salah, prices of ram and food rises. Also, federal government urged to uh, reinstate Atala oil field to Bielsa firm and JV partners. Buhari blames COVID-19. Middlemen flawed for hike. And that's with regards to uh, the pr price of uh, food items. Songwolu, Kalu, Atiku, Saraki, author as uh, Tinubu, others felicitate with Muslims as uh, Governor Gwai distributes gifts to Muslims. Uh, that's in uh, Enugu state. UK requests consular access to Namdi Kanu. IPOB's lawyer accuses DSS of blocking the UK's intervention. Also, it's not over. Uh, it's not yet over for e-transmission of results, says Akwara Madu. And the uh, court frees 48 Yoruba nation agitators. There's also pictures of the Nigerian Air Force uh, pilot uh, who, um, like I said uh, earlier, um, you know, ejected himself from the you know aircraft that was shot down reportedly by uh, bandits and uh, found him, him, uh, his way to safety. Uh, that's also on the Daily Sun this morning. Good morning, Mr. Chris Wandu. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Barika de Sala. Same to you. All right, there's very interesting stories. Um, you, I'm not sure which you would like to start from. Well, let me start with the front page of Punch, uh, uh, with the 
statement created to OBC that the federal government should stop uh, going after people uh, or some people and face um, other realities and challenges. Still not. Uh, but let me tell you this morning that uh, what came in has that um, some people have been arrested um, in uh, Kotonou, uh, our neighboring country, while he was on his way out uh, to Germany. Um, that report has been uh, broke last night and uh, because this morning most of the newspapers must have gone to bed in order to have captured it. Uh, but already some of them have already captured it on the online platform. Uh, if that is true, uh, that means that it will be repatriated to Nigeria um, by today uh, to face charges. Um, we just believe uh, those believers our problem is not something go. Our problem is the mirage of security uh, challenges that is facing us. And um, just a few days ago, uh, two days ago, we saw what happened in Zamfara. We are, and then we should start, start branding this, that bandits, they are not bandits, they are terrorists. Bandits don't shoot down planes, terrorists do. So uh, the earlier we change our act in making, um, putting some kind of perfume uh, on the activities and the clothes of these guys better. These guys are terrorists. Anybody that can shoot down um, a flying object like a, a plane or um, a jet is not, it's not a bandit. He's a terrorist. Most sophisticated terrorists in the world don't even have the capability to do that. So those are the issues as it is. So we have to put them where it is. And um, now it has, this is almost the second time we're having this shutdown. Don't forget that a particular um, uh, fighter jet uh, that was sh shot down uh, by this terrorist sons back and today we have not been able to the, the air force or the military have not been able to say anything after we just kept quiet about that and let this you remember that they came out this terrorist came out with a video of that shutdown um, jet if you remember the big actually and we have the claim that they did the military so said you know that we are already and uh, that they're not best, they're quietly kept quiet since then. So what we're having at our hand, or on our hand, is a serious security challenge that needs to be nipped in the board. We are running into serious problem. We have very limited number of uh, fighter aircraft, and um, the little we have, I'm sure that on the basis, and that should be a source of concern. Um, but congratulations to the to uh, flight lieutenant uh, Adayo Dairo, who was able to make it safely. Uh, he was lucky. Uh, some other ones before he took it. And um, that's good news for us. Hmm. Okay. I'm still on security matters. Um, there's a story here on the front page of the Punch newspaper that says that the bandits have reduced the ransom for Baptist school students and are now demanding 60 million naira. In addition to, you know, other security stories we've seen here, how do you react to this? My dear, under the circumstances, what will you do next? Don't forget what happened to a um, student of the at University in Kaduna that were also kidnapped uh, by bandits. And uh, it took several um, days, I think they still have some or so in the bush. On the day to Ghana, as much as I had that, I think that was 101883. Um, so we may need to reconnect with you. We'll take a, um, you know, um, a hope that we can quickly reconnect with him and then get him to share his thoughts on some of these things. They're very, very big stories. Um, across the papers this morning, if you uh, joined us while we shared. Uh, there's also, also something on um, um, the UK uh, involvement with Namdi Kanu's case and, um, you know, asking for consular access to Namdi Kanu. Uh, that's also something that is um, in papers. It's on the um, Daily Sun this morning. And uh, Senator Ike Kweramadu also, you know, chipping in with regards to the e-transmission of results. It's um, one of the things that we spoke about yesterday extensively mm -hmm. with... Um, uh, an IT expert, you know, so we, we hope that we can reconnect with him and he can get to share some of these thoughts. Um, prices of food items, who is to blame? Uh, the president, according to the Daily Sun, the president says uh, that um, COVID-19, middlemen and flawed might be responsible for the hike mm. in the price of food items and rams.
in the market uh, this uh, seller period. Mm. And uh, when we also take a look at the Punch newspaper, the headline there really strikes me because uh, we know that the Delta variant is in Nigeria yes. and people are coming down with the COVID-19 um, virus. But we know that the federal government is about to begin campaign for um, almost 50,000 core members, it's 49,950. You know, and you, you know, begin to ask, really, what, what then is the sense of urgency? What are the plans that the federal government are putting in place to ensure that Nigerians are safe and that our youth are not put in harm's way? Because if we know that, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic is still very much, you know, deadly, still very much on, we've not defeated that yet, and there's a new Delta variant that is worse than the Alpha variant. You know, it makes you ask questions. Is this the right time for about 50,000 Nigerians to be gathering in one place? Even though well, we know that the NYC is saying that only COVID-19 negative graduates to be admitted into camps, how do you ensure that? Um, would everybody be required to go take tests? We know it costs at least 50,000 Naira. Will, will all these graduates be able to afford 50,000 Naira to take COVID-19 tests? Yeah, would I this think... mean that people will not be able to serve because they can't afford the test? So just questions we need to ask regarding what um, the government would be doing yeah. to to ensure that Nigerian youth are safe as they go to camps? I think it's the government's responsibility to test them. They don't have to, I don't expect that they will be asked to pay for these tests. Um, it should be the government's responsibility to ensure that every one of them is tested before they are proved to go, you know, into camp. Um, I think it's also important that we know the uh, figures with, with every single state in Nigeria. For a long time, we've stopped hearing, you know, these figures daily or daily report from, the, um, um, you know, across Nigeria. Um, the NCDC, of course, has continued to do its work and put out um, um, its daily reportage concerning um, uh, the COVID-19 in Nigeria. They let you know that the FCT has this you know, number um, and, of course, uh, a couple of other states that have also recorded um, um, uh, uh, positive uh, cases. Um, so I think that's also very important so we can tell which states might you know, have a, a red flag above them, um, which states would be, uh, um, would be looked at closely before coppers are uh, sent uh, to them. Welcome back, Mr. Wandu. Oh, Sims frozen there. Yeah, I can hear you, but Mrs. Okay. Ricky. Okay. Okay. okay, well, we're basically talking about the COVID-19 um, Delta variant um, in Nigeria and how almost 50,000 Nigerians are getting ready to camp, you know, for the NYC. So just raising questions about if going to camp and put in, uh, you know, over 49,000 Nigerians, or oh, 49,000 um, Nigerians is appropriate if there are safety measures that are being put in place by the NYC, by the government at this time? Uh, well, I don't know the rationale behind that. Uh, uh, when we have to reach uh, 50,000, uh, life of 50,000 at this time, don't forget that just last week, um, the University of Lagos closed down totally and it's hosted and asked us to go home because of the rise uh, in COVID-19 cases in the rest city. Um, but I hope that the federal government would have put all the necessary measures and also make sure that um, um, the coppers are tested and those uh, make sure that those that are coming to camp are negative. And that should be tested on a daily basis, not just testing them and asking them to be a bit of uh, test. But on the tested basis, uh, we have seen this happening at the Olympics now, currently. And now, uh, despite the fact that uh, the, uh, Tokyo really, uh, they are doing much good to ensure that that um, Olympic uh, goes ahead, the, the cases of um, COVID-19 is really ugly heads and uh, give me a lot of challenges. Um, but I don't know. I hope that they have the capacity to make sure that this almost 50,000 which coppers are safe uh, yeah, across Nigeria, not just in Africa. Don't forget that we have NYC accounts in 36 states of population and also tests. All right, and um, quickly share your thoughts on the um, consular um, uh, story concerning Namdi Kanu. Uh, there's um, calls for uh, the UK to step in once again, um, also from a couple of lawyers. Well, Nigeria is a sovereign state. Um, yes, the British government, they want to give some consular um, assistance to Namdekano, being that uh, he has a British passport. 
But Nigeria is a sovereign country and has its laws, and then we should be able to deal with issues concerning concerning its citizen as it were. Inamdekal is in Nigeria and is bound by Nigerian law. But what most of us are saying is that whatever be the case, it must be given a free and fair uh, trial. It should be transparent enough for everybody to see. Um, so um, I don't know the reason behind the DSS refusing that uh, this thing from the British government. But as it were, the, the, this thing, our law is clear on the issue of uh, prosecution. Don't forget that Nnam uh, Kalu was undergoing uh, some level of uh, criminal prosecution before he, uh, he disappeared, quote unquote, for certain reasons. Anyway, uh, the army invaded his house and uh, he has to run for his life. The rest of them, he was arrested somewhere uh, that is not too clear until now. Uh, but the government have come out to say that he's going to get the best of uh, trial, fair trial, and as even the organizing people. The Panigo group has also said that they want to make sure that they monitor that. And the federal government has said that they are very free to monitor the trial. So, uh, what we are just hoping for is that you will have a, a fair trial uh, based on Nigerian law and um, uh, based on bets. That the intervention from the British government, I don't see whatever the British government can do, whatever they can do on that small part of the and nothing more. Okay, um, when we look at the Punch newspaper, we see a story um, above that says Amcon recovers 1.4 trillion naira and says 350 chronic debtors owe 2.5 trillion naira. And when we look at the Assets Management Corporation of Nigeria, Am Amcon, it seems really that they have, you know, very heavy duties, you know, very important responsibilities in recovering debts. And um, would you say this is something that, you know, needs to be checked? Because 2.5 trillion naira owed in an economy as ours. What do you say, Mr. Wandu? Do you think our debt recovery um, mechanism is functional? Do you think there are adjustments that need to be made? Oh, unfortunately, we lost Mr. Wandu there. Um, but really, when we have, um, we keep talking about loans and you know, our infrastructure regarding loans in the country. And uh, when we now talk about people owing these loans, and it just makes you ask questions you know, regarding, oh, Mr. Wandu, we have you back. Yes. That, what it, did? yes, I was asking you, yeah, apologies for the <laughs> technical glitch. I was talking about the story on the Punch newspaper that says Amcon recovers 1.4 trillion naira in the country and that about 350 other uh, chronic debtors are owing 2.5 trillion naira. And I'm asking you about uh, your thoughts regarding Nigeria's debt recovery um, mechanism. What do you think you know, needs to be done to improve on that? It's rather unfortunate. Um, the problem we, we have in, uh, in the country, especially within the financial uh, sector, is more of impunity on the part of uh, debtors. Don't forget that so many banks in the past uh, have gone down in Nigeria because of this bad debt and also the mismanagement uh, by uh, is a mismanagement by a, is a management team. Um, we have to, we used to have various very, very big banks in the past. But when you look at the debt uh, portfolio, you come to realize that um, there was no way they could have survived. And part of the problem is that um, if there's uh, insiders um, connivance with most of these debtors, that is one. Two, most of the banks don't do the needful. They don't do due diligence in their giving out this loan. And if, where it's necessary also, the, the issue of collateral, they don't get necessary collateral um, before giving out loans. So at the end of it all, uh, you know, it's more of a man, no man. Um, somebody just, if a poor man like me goes to the bank and say, give me 100,000 Naira as loan, they will not give me. But if a rich man goes and say, give me 200 million, 300 million, 1 billion, they quickly give him. Without necessarily asking for the necessary collateral. At the end of it all, if you refuse to pay back, then it becomes a problem for them. And that is why we are having this kind of... So, and until we start prosecuting most of those debtors and making sure that they are sent to jail, irrespective of how big you are, then it will send a signal to the I still blame most of the banks uh, because they are not investing in the risk sector of the economy. They are not. Agriculture, youth empowerment, and the rest of them, those are key areas, and SME is small and medium income 
sectors. They are not doing that. But if somebody will come in and come with a boss, um, um, uh, um, this, thing, uh, um, this thing from them, uh, and they just give them all sorts of loans, recovering it becomes a problem. So I, I don't pity APCON. I, I was at a meeting addressed by the MD of APCON about a year or two ago. We are saying that where he told us, journalists, that they are going to publish names of um, most of the debtors. Um, I know that they tried to do it at a point. I didn't know where they stopped because we need to shame some of these people because the money they are having is not their money. Those are money of the uh, depositors, people like you and I. The little salary we get, we go and drop in a bank and somebody just go there and collect it and that becomes an issue. Mr. So Mr. Wando, I, think, um, um, so I think the CBN and the, uh, and the financial uh, regulator should do as much as possible to be able to tighten the notes on, on this people. Mr. Wandu, still on this uh, topic, it, it, will it be okay to also um, sympathize with these, uh, you know, debtors and say, you know, that the you know, Nigeria's economic, you know, outlook, you know, and the way that businesses have uh, fared in the last few years, you know, you can't really blame them for not being able to make back profit to pay back their loans, you know, maybe also because of the pandemic, uh, our, you know, inflation, um, you know, tough business uh, um, um, you know, rules here and there maybe have made it difficult for these people to pay back. Can that be something that we can also look at? My brother, business about, is about risk and risk taking. That is what business is all about. And, and that is what it takes. And also, um, also, don't forget that there is also what is called debt risk -getting. We cannot say because we have economic that Nigeria is going several countries. Don't you know that we borrow? <laughs> we will, with the country say because we have economic downtime, we are not debt. You will pay. That is the risk you take. So if Nigeria is trying to pay its debt to the foreign countries that, that uh, uh, they borrow from, definitely every individual should be able to pay their debt. That is what. Now, don't, uh, just last week or so, I think there was a report that came in that Nigeria is using about seventy-five percent um, of uh, of its income to service debt. Seventy-five percent living just about 25% to 25% to about 30% for recurrent and capital expenditure. That is huge. So the same thing goes in the business. So when you must have, you have there's a long time, there's a short term and long time plan when you are going for, uh, for such. Because you would have we say that the way trends are, things are going, uh, in the next two years, three years, this might happen and the rest of them. So to me, it's not an excuse. Those debts can be risked. But the fact is that some of them actually refuse to repay those loans. That is what I'm talking about. Some of them are likely refuse to pay. And some will just go to court when the, the bans come in and they will start there because they know that our court system, our judicial system will take years before they can get up. So they continue dragging and dragging. That to me um, is not good enough. All right. Chris Wanda, thank you very much. And uh, once again, happy um, Salah. Uh, we wish you a very beautiful Tuesday ahead. Thank you. Okay. I'll call for my meet after. <laughs> Do have a nice day. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. We'll take a short break. When we come back, what happened on this day, the 20th of July, many years ago? I'm going back to the year 2012 to talk about a mass shooting. Mm, I'm going to the year 1973. Stay with us.